Hi, I'm Simon Pegg. Uh, this is the GQ action replay, and this is the Don't Stop Me Now zombie pummeling sequence from Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> Edgar Wright actually uses a lot of the uh, actual sound from the fruit machine within the movie to sort of um, communicate foreboding and what have you. It's very clever. I think it's called diegetic sound. I think when you use actual elements from the scene as scoring, um, he's very good at that. Watch his films. <laughs> We were in this set for a few weeks and uh, it was towards the end of the shoot. Everybody was very tired and uh, it was pretty draining, I seem to remember. It was very hot. One of the zombies fainted, um, really tall one, because he was near the lights. Um, and, uh, but I, I'll never forget the smell. I'll never forget how brilliant the production design was. There was a bit of tinsel in the, uh, in the money bottle. You know, that was like full of coppers and, um, and someone had put a little bit of tinsel in, like someone had done that on Christmas. I thought it was fantastic. God love those extras for just standing outside and basically being silhouettes and moaning. Um, extras often moan, but uh, these ones were doing it on purpose. That's Steve, he was a stuntman. He was in Brannigan, the uh, John Wayne movie that was set in the UK. It's a bit of a curio, uh, but he was, there's a big pub fight in Brannigan and Steve's in it. So that was a particular badge of honor for me and Edgar to have someone who'd been punched in the face by John Wayne. Where the hell did he come from? I don't know. Tonight, I'm gonna have myself. Long time before everyone was going crazy for Freddy again. Um, this was Edgar's idea, and he wanted to just have a scene of extraordinary violence set to an incredibly happy song. And he's a huge Queen fan, as am I, but Edgar's a particularly huge Queen fan. And uh, Don't Stop Me Now is just this relentlessly positive, sort of um, propulsive um, ode to positivity. And um, we just thought it'd be hilariously funny to beat an old man to death to it. I remember being really tired on this day. I remember just coming down after lunch for, to shoot this scene and being physically in bits and then having to get into zombie bashing mode. Oh, it's terrible being an actor, isn't it? <laughs> What about a rifle? It's not real! Cocktails! What do you mean? The flaming spirits, Trump, Sambuca, Brandy, get a racket. Light it! What? The whole place could go up! What then? How about pool? This is a, quite an early sort of a progenitor to Baby Driver, if you think about it, because it's Edgar basically using music that the characters are listening to to score the film and also we actually move kind of in time with the music. It's sort of, it's sort of like a dance, really. And we, we choreographed it in rehearsal. We, 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 we sort of got into a room and we, we got all these moves together where if you watch Lucy and, and Penelope are actually dancing to the song as they're watching us smashing Steve across the head. Um, but it, yeah, it, it's, you can see Baby Driver as the culmination of ideas that Edgar Wright had been having for many years. Okay, John, it's time at the bar. We were shooting it, we were going one, two. Someone was off because you couldn't have the music on because we had to be clean for sound. So there was, I think we had earbuds in. Yes, we did. We had earbuds in and the music was playing. That's right. Um, and in rehearsal, we got the one, two, one, two going. But yeah, because we couldn't have the music played out um, over the scene because obviously it would mess the sound up. So we all had little buds in. Bless him, he was 70. And we were just absolutely hammering him with, I mean, they're fake. Sure, they're not like wooden, but they were pretty 
I mean, they were hard enough to hit him with. Now that was a breakdance move that I put in myself. Um, I, I had done a little bit of breakdancing as a teenager when the um, explosion of um, incredible creativity uh, happened in the Bronx in 1976. By 1982, it had reached Upton St. Leonard's in Gloucestershire. And um, I'd sort of cottoned onto that and started uh, breaking and popping and doing that kind of thing. And uh, so I threw that little helicopter in there um, as a moment of cool for Sean, because he's not a particularly cool character. Dylan even switches in time in the music. It goes click, 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 which was, you know, just Edgar hammering back that, um, that motif of his. Those zombies at the front were amazing. A lot of them were fans of Spaced that had, we'd just asked to come down. We literally paid them a pound because we had to pay them. And I think we got 1,100 extras who came down to just be zombies for the day. And they were awesome. Paul Kay and my sister uh, bashing through that door in a bizarre little cameo. That's John and Bernie are the landlord and lady of the Winchester, and they were named after the landlord and lady of the Shepherd's Pub in Highgate, which is now called the Boogaloo. And um, that was a tribute to them because they were the, the landlord and lady of this pub that was the kind of the film was based on, really, mine and Nick Frost's inability to leave it. Quiet, Queen We have a situation! I know! Two seconds. Two seconds is a returning motif in the movie, if you didn't already know that. Why would you? That was a real fire extinguisher. It wasn't right. <laughs> I love Lucy Davis's face there. It just, I love Lucy Davis's face anyway, but she makes such a great little expression of enthusiasm when the first zo uh, dart hits the zombie. I can't remember how we did those. I think we did but whip pans and they were sort of already, already there. Definitely for the one in my head. Now the pub was called the Winchester because of the gun. It wasn't named after a, any particular pub. We had to have it, we, we called it the Winchester because we needed to have a, a gun over the bar, which is, um, which is why it's called the Winchester. There's a pub called the Winchester, down one from the Boogaloo Knee, the Shepherds, and they often claim that, that we wrote the film about their pub and we didn't. And that was the last time we ever saw Steve the Stuntman. But he gave it his all. Thanks for watching. That was the Don't Stop Me Now sequence from Shaun of the Dead.